Hey guys, today I'm back as promised with this project. Uh, this is another exciting project for you this week and we are going to learn how to finish all of this in the front and um, we're also going to see how to put this curtain ring uh, without any other embellishment. It, this kind of gives you that kind of store-bought finish and you could use the recycled fabric inside the bag and I have also zipped um, put the zips in. Zips I have already shown you so I'm not going to show you that this week um, but I will put all the links under the description box below this video. Before I go ahead any further I just want to uh, say a little thank you message to all my subscribers. Uh, last week I put up a message, um, the personal message and uh, I was, I thought about, before putting it on, I thought about so many times, shall I, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I, and then in the end I thought I need to let you know because I've been silent for so many weeks and it's not like only a few people anymore, there's a few thousands there. So people will be thinking, oh, she says that she's going to put uh, videos up every week and what's happening and things like that. It's not, it's not really good when I'm trying to grow my channel. So I thought I need to do it and uh, with great difficulty I came out and I filmed it and um, it was not great but I was really low at that time last week but I feel much positive and uh, I'm really really full of energy now. I'm looking forward to Christmas, family is coming so um, just going to put all this behind us, good things to look forward to and it's just life, things happen and it's just life and you just have to learn to cope with it. What I wanted to say is um, about my miscarriage, so many of you have come and um, put the messages in. I think as of today I have about 38 to 40 comments. Um, please believe me, I have read all of them and every time I read each comment I had tears in my eyes. And I don't know you, um, I've only put some videos up and I share my tutorials and the love and affection you have shown me, it really touches me and makes me emotional. That's one of the reasons I haven't written any individual comments on the comment, in the comment box below. So uh, I just wanted to say a huge thank you. I honestly did not expect such a overwhelming response and um, some of you have been just so kind and thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, before we move on, I just want to tell you that I have finished doing this project, so exciting news, and it will be on next Monday or Tuesday, just before Christmas. I have made patterns, so I'm giving away free patterns for um, this project. Basically, this is the one I filmed, and this came out even nicer because if I just show you inside, can you see how colorful it is and a lot more neatly finished? And I can actually put about eight credit cards. And this is just so, I mean, I kept looking at it and I thought, oh great, this just looks great and I'm gonna keep it for myself. I'm not gonna make, this is a Christmas present. <coughs> okay, anyway, so this is the one I have filmed. So throughout the film, you'll be seeing this next week. And for the patterns of this, you can have patterns uh, from Wednesday onwards this week. So please, please send me an email. Uh, the email is coming up right now on the screen. So I, some, of, some of the emails I have, because some of you have emailed me, even if you have, just for the ease of it, if you send me an email saying, hi Izzy, send me a pattern, then I'll just reply and just send you the pattern. It is for free, it is my Christmas present to you all. And this will only be open till Christmas, um, Christmas Eve midnight um, this year. And after that, I'll put this up on eBay so you can buy the patterns online. So um, let's go ahead and get started with this bag. Thank you very much. To start off this project, we need two back panels of a pair of trousers, which means there are two more of the same pieces for the front. And there's two back panels of another pair of trousers, which is a cord. This is a jean and this is a cord. And I have cut two rectangular pieces out of this and two rectangular pieces out of this. I'm putting the measurements on the screen right now. And you can also find all the details in the description box below. I have also got this fake leather, which is almost like a fabric, fabric backing and it's got the leather look. Um, if you have 30 centimeters, it should be absolutely fine. And I have cut out a wide strip, which is about four and a half to five inches. I've cut a small strip about two inches wide 
and this is um, this is another rectangular piece which I've cut out for the base. I'll be giving you measurements for these in a minute. Okay, I have also got lining which is half a meter of lining. This will cover half a meter of your lining and then you, it will also cover your zip panel. If you want extra pockets inside then you probably need a little bit more for the pockets or you could make up a patch pocket out of the denim fabric that is left over. Entirely up to you. Um, I've also got a zip which is 20 inches long. I've taken an open and zip but 20 inches long closed in zip is also absolutely fine. I've got three meters of half an inch bias binding. I've also got four pairs of curtain rings. They're basically split into half and once you cut a hole in your fabric, put, fix it there and then they, they just go and um, kind of click which is a great trim to have for bags. So this is kind of an antique brass color, matches my theme. So I'm going to show you how to use this later. Okay, out of the two, this is the denim, this is the cord. Basically, I have cut out uh, two rectangular pieces of this, two rectangular pieces of this, and I have placed them together and ironed out a shape easy or a woven interfacing. This is fusible woven interfacing and that interfacing will hold it together and basically put two top stitches on there. This is all raw edge, I've not finished it. I'll, I'll hold up close to show you how the raw edge looks like. Okay, basically I left it raw because we're going to take one of these smaller strips and place it on top and kind of close it. So we don't really need to do a zigzag stitch. If you're not clear about how to do this, I'm placing a link right now on the screen. Go and watch it or you can find the link in the description box below. Um, this is called making flat denim fabric from your denims. Something like that. I I've put a link there. Okay. So this one and two I did and one and two I did. Then I went and did a seam in the side seam. So that's just one single layer side seam and I have opened the seam flat and I haven't put any top stitches at all. So this is where we're going to start. Okay, so let me take the strip of fabric. This is a leather suede fabric. The reason I did this join is because, um, you know, when you join on, you, your bag will have a side seam here, side seam here. But when you join it, it's got to neat match it perfectly. Uh, at least one I can avoid it if I did like this, because this will have to match again. So I'm just going to go and sew a top stitch on top of this. Just keep it in the center. I'm just going to center the line of the join here and then keep it on top then go and sew. Before I do that, I'm just going to leave about half an inch here, like that, and then I'm going to start my stitch half an inch away. You will see why I'm doing this later on, but just follow me and you will understand. Okay, we're starting about half an inch away from the edge, and I'm just putting my seam right at the edge. Okay. Keep your seam length to quite wide because this is only a stay stitch. Okay, we're coming to the end now. So again, I'm going to leave about half an inch at the end because this is my seam allowance and I'm going to stop my stitching here. Again, I start at this edge and go all the way till the other end. I'm not going to sew because we don't want the stitching to be seen. So I'm just going to go and jump and leave about half an inch and then sew from the other side. Okay, we are coming to the finishing, um, we're coming to the point where we started here. So this is my other line. Again, I go and stop before half an inch. Okay, now we've finished attaching this. We've left about half an inch on these two here. And uh, at this stage, we need to make sure this is absolutely straight because when you put a top stitch on, sometimes you might have a little bit of curve shape coming in because of the two different textures of fabric that we're using. So I'm just going to lay my, um, I'm just going to lay my ruler and just trim 
this is not even quarter inch or one by eighth inch it's just a little bit at the corner so we're absolutely dead straight it's not going through the leather here so I might have to cut the leather off okay and also make sure the leather matches with each other here okay so we're going to cut about half an inch exactly trim this off and trim here as well you might be wondering why did we do this because we want this to go and attach inside the seam but you will see later on why I've done that basically I just want to give this a really really kind of professional finish um, if you follow my steps you will see that you will achieve it too okay so now we go and open this up you can leave it as it is if you like uh, it really doesn't matter but I want to finish this very very I want to give a neat finish so you could use a contrasting tape but I'm using a black one because then it starts looking very neat and very professional I'm gonna place it on top now we need I need to go and sew on both the sides of the bias tape because if we fold if we had folded this like this sometimes the edges won't go neat and the sewing machine may not sew properly but this is something you can do if you like that you know if you want to fold on both the edges and go and sew a tape like that you can actually do it but sometimes my machine doesn't take so many layers so I'm finding ways of doing it neatly but without putting the machine through so much just stress okay but by stay we're gonna start from the edge not half an inch away start from the edge okay so we're gonna place this like this and we're gonna place it like that on both the sides and just go and sew two stitches two stitches uh, I've almost come to the end of my fabric so I'm just going to cut my bias tape so how much you need right till the end of the fabric and now I'm going to stop about three or four inches away I'm not going to cut this I'm just going to stop my stitching here because when I attach this side to the side seam we, I might have to move this a little bit just to match it perfectly but if I've already sewn in and if I have got like quarter of an inch you know this is away from the edge or it's not matching then I'll have to remove the stitches redo it again so I'm just going to sew a little more and then this is about between three and four inches so I'm just going to stop it there so now I'm going to go and do exactly the same on this side and also sew the edge of this and stop about all of this I'm going to stop about two three inches away from the end of the fabric okay okay we have sewn the bias tape on the top of this uh, middle tape now we also as you remember we also left these two bias tapes about a few inches away from the edge now you go and match them so just make sure both the bias tapes just match perfectly even if it is not 100% right and if you're a millimeter here and there don't worry because I've got another trick up my sleeve just to show you how to cover that okay don't worry about the cut off leather that we have done earlier just match your um, match your bias tape and secure it with a couple of pins I'm securing it a few inches away so that I don't have to remove my pins when I sew and when I'm going to sew I'll make sure again my bias tape matches because this has been left three inches away so I can actually move it to where I want it to be so that's one of the beauty of leaving it open so we can shift it a little bit to match the seams properly so now I'm not going to worry about matching the seams I'm only worrying about matching this in the center go and sew a half an inch stitch from here to here okay I've just decided that I will sew the center first and then I sew the front and the back before I do that I'll just open it up and just make sure my side seams are matching and then I just go and put a tack stitch the 
that is, that is just a sort of basting, what do you call it, by hand. And uh, now it's quite secure. So now I go and sew a half an inch stitch from beginning to end. So when I'm coming to this edge again, my leather is not catching and it's not bulky at all because we have already cut that off. And I'm going to remove this basting uh, tacking stitch that we did earlier at the edge so I can open my, open my, so I can open my seams in the iron. This is the side seam we have just finished. Now I'm going to press it open before we turn it out. The seams are flat, so I'm going to turn this inside out. You can see that we've got a perfect match. And uh, can you see here that the leather, because we cut it, it's not making any bulky, bulky joints. So that's just sitting there. You can just leave it. And also because we, um, we left the uh, bias tape, we left the bias tape like this, we could move it and match it perfectly. Now what you need to do is go and sew this area which you left earlier because otherwise it will be there and you won't be able to finish it. So go and sew this stitch and this stitch. And after we've done that, what I'm also going to do is to take the leftover bias tape, place it on top of the seam and sew on either side. I'm not going to film this because you've already seen how to sew a bias tape, just an edge stitch. So even this leather piece that we have cut off here will just get joined and then we have got a really neat side seam. We're going to do exactly the same on this side seam as well. Put a tape across and then you just sew on the side seam. That means you don't see any seams at all all the way around and the bias tape will hold the seam together flat. I have sewn the bias tape on the side seam here. Now what I'm going to do is bring my side seam right in the center. So match the front and the back. So now I'm going to use this as my side seam and this becomes my front, okay? So the way this bag's going to work is I'm going to put two curtained rings here and two on the other side which goes to the back. So before we go ahead and do any of these, we need to attach the lining. I take my lining and fold it into half. Okay, now I have cut off a little bit of fabric from here and I have prepared my zipper panel. And this I have shown you in my previous project, how to do this. And if you want to learn how to prepare this zipper panel and what sort of measurements you need to take, I'm placing the link right now on the screen or you can find the link in the description box below. So go and find out how to make these and uh, you can prepare this and come back and watch this project. Okay, so I'm going to keep the zipper panel aside and I'm going to prepare the fabric. Because our main panel is kind of in a circle, we need to prepare the lining. So we really don't need two side seams for this. And because this is in a fold, I'm not going to cut the fold. So let me just go ahead and measure my, if I measure from one end to end, it's about 21 inches. And from here to the bottom, it's 16, 16 and a half. I'm going to take a little extra, so I have, an extra, I have a bit extra. So I'm going to take exactly 21, 22 inches and then trim a little bit. That, that's enough for my side seam. Okay, let me just go ahead and measure here. It is measuring again 21 inches and 21 inches. So. Just go and mark, this is 22 and a half inches, so I'll, I'll, all I need to do is take one inch extra. So basically, I'm just going to trim just under two inches, so my circle, when I make the circle, it's perfect. Okay, so let me place this together. So now I go and measure, and this is exactly 21 and a half inches, so that is perfect. At this stage, if you need any pockets for the inside of your bag, you need to decide what you want to do, and go and sew your pockets. So this one, I have made, 
like a little, I've taken another small piece of fabric, I've uh, kind of folded and folded again and eight stitched this on the top and I have made some iron markings like this and um, position it right in the center so we need to know where we need to position it. So if this is the top of a bag, let's say for example, and we have to leave about half an inch at the edge. We need to leave about half an inch for the seam allowance and approximately place your ring and see. So my ring is um, 55 mm on the outer ring. 50, it measures about 55 mm, 55 mil on the outer ring. So I'm going to leave about three, three inches from the top, so that should be enough. So at, at three inches, we have this zipper panel that will go in. So I need to be un, after four inches. It needs to be away, well away from the three inches, okay? So let me go and place about... I'm just going to place this so you can see it clearly on the video. I'm going to place it at five inches there. Okay, right, so that's where it needs to be. I can't do this after I sew my side seam. It has to be done before I do my side seam. And go and center the fabric like that. And then just make sure this is centered. And that is ten and a half inches. That's the center. So basically go and sew a top stitch all around. If you want to know how to sew this, there are so many other videos I've made in the, uh, in the past. Uh, one of them is called Sahara, which is a four part series. And I'll, I'll, put the, I'll place the link on the screen and uh, basically go and sew an edge stitch after you fold your pockets, okay? I'm not gonna film this, I'll show you the next step. Okay, that's my main panel, that's my lining. You can see the lining is actually about an inch here and an inch bigger here on both the sides. Okay, this is the, um, this is the D ring. This is the curtain ring we're gonna use. And my curtain ring is actually 15 mil and about two and a quarter inch, but we have to leave about half an inch from the beginning. So um, if I leave about three and a half inches, if my seam comes to about three and a half inches here, that should be absolutely fine. Just to be on the safer side, I'm going to take four and a half inches from the top of the lining because this hasn't got a seam. The lining has got a seam. So let me put this away. And um, here I have marked four and a half inches, four and a half inches and cut my lining open. And I've also made a center notch mark. When you do this, if you're doing exactly like I do, make sure you leave, you leave the side seam and then from the side seam, you measure your center mark and make a center notch mark, okay? Now we go ahead and join the zipper panel. So basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my zipper panel, match the center like that, and then a couple of pins, and then go and match the other side seam on this side and a few pins and then keep this on the top and sew. I've already shown this in the video where I showed you how to make your zipper panel, but in that the only difference was that there was two side seams. If you get confused, go ahead and make two side seams and just follow the example accurately. Just follow my video and basically make sure when you have closed the two side seam, this circle will match this circle, okay? I'll go and do this and come back and show you I'm not going to film this. My zipper panel is now attached. Now I go and sew a side seam for half an inch on this side. Now it will be a full proper circle so I can insert this into this one. Okay. I have sewn the side seams here. Now we're going to go and fit this into this one. Before we do this, I'm just going to turn my main panel inside out. Okay, so from the side seam, make a mark and kind of press it and make a notch mark. This is the top of my lining because the heat, this is where the zip is. And from this notch mark, hold this notch mark to the seam, not to the end, to the seam. And 
make another notch mark because this is going to be your center point because we are not matching the side seam to side seam you remember we are joining this is our side seam before but we made it as a front so we need to make sure that we do it properly okay so what we're going to do is this is the right side okay now we're going to pass this into the lining like that and now match your bias tape to the center notch mark and put a pin okay and we go on to the opposite side and match your bias tape to the notch mark and place a pin okay now hold it together stretch it and see because these two need to match perfectly if it doesn't match you'll end up with a little pleat somewhere to avoid that if you have a pleat then go ahead and um, take the seam in a little bit more and you know kind of have the seam a little bit in more okay at this stage just make sure this is perfect mine's perfect so I'm just going to hold it in go and sew a half an inch stitch all around because this is in a circle we don't have a starting and a finishing point so just start any way you like and go and sew a half an inch stitch sew over a little extra and then finish okay we, we have sewn we're finished sewing the top so now turn this inside out And then fold the lining in. You can see the lining's a little bit extra. We're going to trim this off once we're ready. Okay, at this stage, um, we can go and iron this and put a top stitch, but later on we are going to go, to, uh, go and put a eight stitch. So I'm not gonna do it. I'm just going to iron it and then pin this all around. Okay, I have opened, this is the lining, this is the main fabric. So just so that I get a neat finish, I'm just going to press the seams to one side. So it's easier to put a top stitch. Now we are going to push this inside. Now try and take your seam uh, because this is you, this is going to show up at the top, so you have to be very neat. So I'm just going to pin about an inch away, just making sure that my fold is right dead on the seam properly. So it's neither too much towards the lining nor towards the main fabric. So my seam is right at the top. And go and place a few pins. And now we are going to go and sew a top stitch. You can either sew from this side or this side. I'm gonna sew from here because black on black won't show through, but I still want the stitch to be neat from inside. So I'm gonna sew from, I'm gonna put this as a top stitch and go and sew about a quarter inch away um, a top stitch all around. I'm going to align the edge of my foot on this side and sew a top stitch. I'm coming to the f uh, point where I started before, so I'm just going to sew a couple of stitches extra on top and then finish. Okay, finish the top stitch and there's your zipper. If you open the zipper then you can see the full bag and now we need to trim the excess fabric. So I'm going to take a ruler and see which is the uh, the longest I have. So this is coming to about 15 and a half inches, probably safer. So from here, I'm gonna mark a 15 and a half inch. And then just join my mark. Because I won't be able to cut this with the rotary cutter. So I'm just going to trim this with scissors. Remember, I'm cutting all four layers, but if it's too thick for you, just go and cut 
one layer at a time. Okay, so that's my bottom panel done. So now the zip is sitting properly because the zip will determine how your back's going to sit. So now we need to make some marking. So I go ahead and mark the side seams here and I go ahead and mark the side seams on this side. Okay, your point, your center point should be your bias tape. If it isn't, it might have moved a little bit. Just go ahead and mark. It's almost at the center, so I'm not going to worry about it, okay? So now you could either, we're going to form a base, just like we've done in all the other bags. Okay, I've cut out a two by two inch uh, square. Okay, now we've, the side seams is uh, done, but the bottom seam's not done. So we need to leave about half an inch at the bottom for the side seam and then mark this bit. So that's the side seam and that's the two inch square. So now go ahead and cut this. take this as a template and then go to the other side keep it here mark it and cut this off Let's open the zip and turn it this way and shift your lining so we're going to work on the lining later and let's just close the bottom first. So we go and sew half an inch stitch just on the denim panel just going to sew a half an inch stitch starting and finishing with the back stitch okay now just you can you see this corner hold this corner like this open it up and that should match perfectly if you want to just open the seam but it really doesn't matter and go and sew a stitch from this corner to this corner starting and finishing with a back stitch we now go and sew it we now go and do exactly the same to the other corner Okay, we have sewn these two corners in and now let's see how the bag looks like. Okay, that's how it's going to sit. Now let's turn this, the whole thing inside out. Okay. And go and do the same thing with the lining except we need to leave a little gap in at the bottom of the bag so I'm just going to fold this into half make a notch mark just so that I know the center point from the center point I'm going to leave about three inches on either side so I make a mark and now I go and sew from here to here and then leave the gap and from here to here okay so this is the only gap we've got and after I've sewn this I go ahead and open it up and do exactly the same for the inner of the bag okay I have sewn this corner and this corner now we have got a little gap here so before we do anything we just go and take the base of the bag on this side and then match the base of this bag here like that 
just match the seams because the stitch on the denim needs to be completely aligned with the stitch of the lining and put a pin and just go and sew another stitch so they hold together when you open the bag okay the same way we're going to go this side and match the denim to the lining and place a pin place a pin and then go and sew a top stitch it's all looking a bit like all crumpled up don't worry you know just follow what I'm doing and I'll show you what to do okay so let's go ahead and join this and join this corner and I'll come back and show you okay I have joined these two sides now we've got the opening here so now we are just going to turn everything from this hole okay so before we go ahead and turn it in just fold the seams together like that and let's go and put a top stitch and close it okay I have closed the seam and now let's turn the bag inside out now your handbag is looking good and at this stage all we need to do is to go and put our rings and then attach the handle before we go ahead and put the rings I'll just show you what to do with the handle okay this is my handle and um, my handle is about four and a quarter inch wide um, I'm just going to place fold it into half pa basically if you want to make it perfect then go and make a score mark like this and then you have the center mark and fold this half in the center fold this half in the center and I'm just going to go and place a one inch wide bias tape like that and then sew on either side okay after making the mark my um, the leather was not holding properly so I have put some pins on either side so there's my center mark and I'm just going to place my bias tape like that and just go and sew an edge stitch I just turn the corners Now turn it round and then sew on this side. Okay, I have sewn the handle and I've trimmed the edges and I've cut it into half. And if you want to measure it, this is about 27 inches long. Each, my two handles measure 27 inches long. Okay, now we need to go ahead and place this D-ring before we do that we need to make some markings so basically close your zip because if you don't close your zip you won't know your center point so just lay the back flat like that and go and measure it should be 21 inches as we measured before and just my center my center point is my bias tape so this is the center and make it into half again so that's coming up to ten and a half inches so this would be five and a quarter so I just make a little mark and I do the same on this side so I take that as ten and a half and then I just go and do five and a quarter so that's my marking I'm only marking one side I'm not marking the other side there's a reason behind it there will be a male and a female in your rings so just go and take it and now with the male I'm just gonna place my ring uh, so the marking is right in the center and then I go and make the circle inside okay so there's your circle let's just put a pin underneath that circle so we don't make a mistake now I go and hold both my lining and my top layer and then just make a little cut mark 
So that just gives us the hole that we need to go and cut the rest of the circle. So don't cut the outside of the circle, just cut the inside of the circle. Because if you're using a marking chalk like me, then it might make a really thick mark. Okay, that's the one with the bigger wall, and that's the female. So I just go and place my circle. Okay, so that's fitting in nicely. So now I go with the top layer and place it like that and just clip it into place. Just make sure it's properly and securely in, into place. And putting an eyelet in, putting a plastic curtain ring in is as simple as that. Okay, we go and do this to this side. And after you've done this, make sure you make a circle through this top circle into the other side of the fabric. Don't go and measure the center because sometimes it won't be right because your handle, it, you might have moved the fabric a little bit or if, you, if your fabric has got a little bit of lycra, it might have stretched a little bit. So only to the top layer we do this. And now I go and mark. For the bottom part, I go and mark holding the circle and then make a rough circle there. And then I go and hold this one to make my inner marking. Okay, I have put all the four rings. Now I'm just going to go and that is my handle. So basically I'm just going to go and this doesn't need an edge finish because this is a bias fabric and then this is leather. So I'm just going to sew on the black side, on the black, um, I'm just going to sew on the black bias binding so I don't see any other stitching there. And I'm going to do the same on this side. Okay, we've finished the handle and there you are. Our beautiful designer handbag is now ready. Now how neat does it look and how beautiful it is. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, making this bag. If you do have a go at this project and um, ha you know if you use different colors and curtain rings, just send me a picture and let me know or leave a comment in the comment box below. Please don't forget, next week before Christmas, I'm going to be putting up this uh, project and also giving away free patterns for this one. So send me an email. My email is coming up right now on the screen. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week.